On the western edge of the island of Kyushu lies the port city of Nagasaki. Thanks to its many centuries of contacts with foreign cultures, it has a distinctly cosmopolitan feel. Walk through the streets and you come across many buildings that bear witness to this long and colourful history. Here and there you can see churches with spires reaching up to the heavens. Christianity was first introduced to Nagasaki more than 400 years ago. Until the mid-19th century, Nagasaki was Japan's only trading interface with the outside world. Recently, many of the historic European-style buildings have been reconstructed. There is also a strong Chinese influence. During the 17th century, many immigrants arrived from the Asian mainland, building their own temples and giving the city a Chinese flavor. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we introduce the historic buildings of Nagasaki, exploring the varied architecture that reflects the complex history of this cosmopolitan city. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in the city of Nagasaki on the western edge of Kyushu, the southernmost of Japan's four main islands. From where I'm standing now you get a marvelous view of the whole city of Nagasaki, the center of the city is down that way. Unfortunately it's not a terribly nice day today. Over here in the distance it's pretty misty but right over there is China and beyond that the rest of the world of course. The name of Nagasaki inevitably brings to mind the atomic bomb that was dropped here on the 9th of August 1945, three days after a similar bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. 150,000 people were left dead or wounded, and the city was devastated. Today we'll be looking at some historical buildings that miraculously survived the bombing and have been carefully preserved by the local people ever since. And as we look at the city's architecture, we'll also be examining Nagasaki's fairly complex history. First of all, a general introduction to the city. The city of Nagasaki is the capital of Nagasaki Prefecture and has a population of around 450,000. Thanks to its exotic cosmopolitan feel, it's one of Japan's leading tourist destinations, with some 6 million visitors per year from both inside and outside of the country. One of the many features that catch the eye of visitors is the series of stone bridges that span the Nakashimagawa, the river that runs through the city centre. The Meganebashi, or Spectacles Bridge, was constructed in 1634. It was the first arched stone bridge built in Japan. The techniques for building stone bridges were introduced from China and spread from here to the rest of the country. To the south of these bridges is Nagasaki's Chinatown. There are about 40 Chinese restaurants and shops in this area. They're always popular with tourists. Not far from Chinatown is a Buddhist temple called Sofkji. Erected in 1629, it's the oldest Chinese-style temple in Japan. The city extends up into the surrounding hills and there are many steep streets and alleys. One of the most famous is Orandazaka or Holland Hill. Many foreigners used to walk up and down this slope and that is how it got its name. Halfway up this hill is a district where there are still many European style buildings. In the 19th century this became a popular residential area among foreigners. There are also a number of churches in this neighborhood. The most famous is Oura Church. Close to the church is Glover Garden, another popular destination for visitors. The Glover House, built in 1863, is the oldest surviving Western-style wooden building in Japan. It's notable for its unusual angular layout. Nagasaki's history is intrinsically bound up with Japan's relations with the outside world.
Until the second half of the 16th century, Nagasaki was an insignificant fishing village. It was a local warlord, Omura Sumitada, who developed it into a trading port. From the 17th century, Nagasaki's importance increased after the ruling shoguns enforced a policy of national seclusion, banning commerce with the outside world. The only exception was Nagasaki, where an artificial island called Dejima was constructed in one corner of the harbour to house traders from Holland. The city became Japan's sole gateway to the rest of the world. Nagasaki lies on a deep indentation in the coastline, offering excellent natural harbourage. At the same time, Nagasaki's location at the far western extremity of Japan facilitated the flow of culture from China, the Korean peninsula and more distant lands. The many buildings in Nagasaki dating from past centuries reflect the city's historical and geographical importance. Nagasaki is a city that has quite a lot of steep hills, including this one. This one's called Holland Hill, and it's a fairly popular tourist destination. I'm walking up here to get a good view of some buildings that we're going to look at on today's show and the, my vantage point is right up here. There's a group of western houses here which were built in the Meiji period in the latter part of the 19th century and those have been preserved. Beyond those and a little lower down with the yellow roof is a Chinese temple and then all the way back on the hill with the green roof is a church known as the Oura Church. There's a particularly high concentration of Christian churches in this part of Japan, and Nagasaki Prefecture has more than 130 alone. Out of those, the Oura Church is the most famous. Next, we're going to take a look at the history of Christianity in Japan. Situated on top of a hill looking out over Nagasaki, Oura Church is designated as a national treasure. Built in 1864, it's the oldest Catholic church in Japan still standing today. The facade is built in the neo-Gothic style, evoking the architecture of medieval Europe. But actually, this Catholic church blends traditional Japanese building techniques with Western-style church architecture. Looking at the outside, some of the distinguishing features of Oura Church can be seen. First, the roof is covered with the same Japanese tiles that are used on traditional Japanese buildings. The walls are made of brick, a building material introduced from the West. But they're finished in plaster, just as Japanese buildings have been for centuries. Inside, the church has a spacious feel. Here too, Japanese aesthetics and skills are well in evidence. The structural pillars and beams are made of Zelkova wood. The columns are decorated with carvings with a design of leaves. The rib vaulting of the ceiling features the pointed arches typical of Catholic churches. In the Western world, vaulting like this is typically built of stone. But seen from above, it becomes evident that this ceiling is actually made of bamboo. The smooth plaster of the vaulting has been applied against this bamboo framework. The curves of the ceiling make skillful use of bamboo's flexibility as a building material. Light enters the interior of the church through many windows coloured with stained glass. Around 6,000 individual pieces of glass were carefully fitted together to create these windows.
At the time the church was built, colored glass was not available in Nagasaki. It all had to be imported, mostly from France. It is this blending of East and West in both construction methods and materials that makes Oura Church so unique. The reason why Nagasaki has so many churches lies in the city's complex history dating back more than 400 years. Christianity was introduced to Japan in 1549 by the Jesuit priest Francis Xavier. That was during the Age of Discovery, when ships set out from Europe to chart and explore all corners of the world. Up to that point, the people of Japan had followed the beliefs of Shinto and Buddhism, and the Christian teachings seemed fresh and new to them. Numerous people converted to Christianity, especially in Kyushu around 750,000 within half a century. By the end of the 16th century, Japan's rulers were feeling threatened by the rapid spread of Christianity. The warlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi and his successor Tokugawa Ieyasu both issued edicts banning the religion. Hideyoshi ordered the missionaries in Nagasaki to be put to death. Ieyasu also banned the Christian faith. Under the succeeding Tokugawa shoguns, it remained illegal to practice the religion. However, some believers evaded this official persecution and continued to worship in secret by pretending to be Buddhists. They became known as hidden Christians. In Nagasaki, there were many of these secret believers who held to their Christian faith. The arrival of Western warships in the mid-19th century led to Japan opening its doors to the world. In 1873, the ban on Christianity was lifted. Many foreign priests came to Nagasaki and began to proselytize. After holding on to their faith for more than 200 years in the face of extreme persecution, the hidden Christians were able to reveal themselves. Christianity began to flower again, and many churches were built in Nagasaki. Today, the prefecture has 15% of Japan's entire Catholic population. The churches of Nagasaki are a testament to the endurance of Christianity through the twists and turns of history. I'm now in the center of Nagasaki's Chinatown, which ranks next to Yokohama and Kobe as one of the three largest Chinatowns in Japan. Back in the Edo period, when Japan was to all intents and purposes closed off to the outside world, trade with China was still being conducted, and this whole area was full of warehouses where merchandise imported from China would be stored. Today, it forms the center of the Chinese community here in Nagasaki. Even in the 17th century, there were quite a lot of Chinese people living here, and they even built their own Chinese-style Buddhist temples. Next, we're going to take a closer look at one of those. Near Nagasaki's Chinatown stands a Zen Buddhist temple called Sofukuji. This is the oldest extant building in Japan that is built in the Chinese style. It was erected in 1629, using funds raised by donations from merchants from Fujian. Today, there are four 17th century Chinese temples in Nagasaki, of which Sofukuji is the best preserved. The gate that marks the entrance to the temple is called Dai Ippo Mon. It is registered as a national treasure. According to tradition, it was erected in 1696. This gate exhibits many exquisite architectural details typical of China's early Qing dynasty. There are carvings of bats on the doors. In China, these are symbols of good fortune and are associated with prayers for happiness and long life. The bracket work supporting the eaves is also highly distinctive, with the wooden members interlocking at 45 degree angles. Painted in vibrant colors, 
This is a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. This feature is an indication that Chinese carpenters were involved in the construction. There is another part of the temple that is registered as a national treasure, the main hall. It dates from 1646 and was also funded by donations from Chinese merchants. Temples in this sect of Buddhism frequently boast architecture dating from the late Ming or early Qing dynasties. The floor of the main hall is paved with Chinese-style ceramic tiles. They are laid on the diagonal in relation to the building's axis. The ceiling over the entrance exhibits a gentle curve. This too is an indication of the Chinese influence on the architecture. In contrast to the Chinese architecture of the ground floor, the upstairs of the main hall, which was added later, is built in the Japanese style. The difference is visible in the struts supporting the eaves. Under the ground floor eaves, they are close together in the Chinese style. On the top roof, they are spaced further apart in two tiers, following the Japanese tradition. The Chinese temples that can still be found in Nagasaki reflect the history of relations between Japan and China during the 17th century. At that time, many Chinese people came to live in Nagasaki. Historians say the city had a population of 60,000, of whom 10,000 were of Chinese descent. These immigrants built distinctive houses in a district that covered an area of about 30,000 square meters, twice as large as Dejima, where the Dutch traders were housed. The reason for this large influx of Chinese people was the upheavals that rocked China during the 17th century. The ruling Ming emperors, who were of the majority Han ethnic group, found their power weakening. A wave of Manchu invaders swept in from the north, eventually establishing the Qing dynasty. Many Han Chinese fled to South China fleeing those invaders, and some of them crossed over to Japan. Many of those Chinese migrants settled in Nagasaki. The city's most famous annual festival is called Nagasaki Kunchi. It's associated with Suajinja, the Shinto shrine where the local deity is worshipped. One of the most popular events at the festival is the Dragon Dance, a performance deeply imbued with Chinese pageantry. Today, Nagasaki's Chinese population numbers around 4,000, and others are now naturalized Japanese citizens. With a relationship dating back over 400 years, the city's connection with Chinese culture remains strong to this day. I'm now in an area called Dejima, which literally means outlying island. It's right in the middle of Nagasaki now, although when it was originally built, it was a man-made island in the shape of a fan with water on all sides. It's not very big, about 15,000 square meters, which is about twice the size of a football pitch. There's been a major reconstruction project started in 1996, and 10 of the original 19th century buildings have been reconstructed. You can see them here. Today, Dejima is purely a tourist spot, but you can see the way that the Dutch traders lived and worked back in the Edo period. And for over 200 years, Dejima was Japan's sole gateway to the outside world. We'll take a look next at the significance that it had for Japan back in those days. While Japan was closed to the rest of the world, its sole window for foreign trade was the man-made island of Dejima in Nagasaki Harbor. It was constructed in 1636 and had more than 20 buildings on it. Over the next two centuries, around 700 Dutch ships docked there. Entering Dejima from the city, 
entail crossing a bridge and passing through a thatched wooden gate called the Sea Gate. This reconstruction was erected in 1990. As it was the only point of access between Nagasaki and the island, magistrates were stationed there to control who entered and who left. This is a reconstruction of the chief factor's residence. Holland was the only European country that was allowed to trade with Japan, and this is where the head of the Dutch trade delegation was housed. Upstairs was his office and living quarters. The rooms were decorated in the European style, which was unknown anywhere else in Japan at that time. This large room, 58 square meters in area, has been laid out to show a table setting for a Dutch Christmas party. This chamber would also have been used as a reception hall for entertaining the local lords and officials from the shogun's government. This is the room used by the Japanese officials who worked on Dejima. In contrast with the chief factor's residence, it was built in a purely Japanese style. It has been arranged to show how it would have looked during the trade transactions. This is the number three warehouse, where the imported merchandise was stored. Here, hemp and sacks of sugar can be seen, along with casks of oil and liquor. The Western Science Room displays materials relating to Japanese studies of European sciences and arts during the Edo period. Because all this knowledge was introduced via the Netherlands, these studies came to be known in Japan as Dutch learning. From the end of the 18th century to the mid-19th century, various fields of this Dutch learning reached Japan via Dejima, and gradually Western artifacts and ideas spread to other parts of the country. Western optical instruments, such as the microscope and telescope, were considered state-of-the-art technology. They proved extremely valuable to generations of Japanese scientists. The Elekita is a machine that generates electricity through friction. A Japanese scholar named Hiraga Gennai created his own version of this equipment after visiting Nagasaki. Meanwhile, in the field of medicine, many medical instruments were introduced into Japan from Europe via Dejima. This was the equivalent of a modern-day stethoscope. Some of the Europeans who stayed in Dejima had a profound impact on Japan. One of them was Dr. Philip Franz von Siebold. He opened a school in Nagasaki which taught Western medicine to doctors from all over the country. This had a major influence on the practice of medicine in Japan. From Dejima, this so-called Dutch learning helped to lay the foundations for the scientific and technical developments of modern Japan. We've now reached our final destination on our tour of Nagasaki, which is Glover Garden, a particularly popular tourist spot. There are six Western-style homes and three other historic buildings which have been relocated here for preservation, all of them originally dating back to the latter half of the 19th century. Next, we're going to take a look at some more buildings from that period. A new phase in Japanese history began from the middle of the 19th century. In 1858, the U.S.-Japan Treaty of Amity and Commerce was signed, opening up Japan's long-closed doors to the world. Five Japanese ports were designated for foreign trade, including Nagasaki. Glover Garden sits on a hill overlooking the city. 
The western style buildings here were built by foreigners who came to live in Nagasaki after the port was opened. The Glover House was built in 1863. It is the oldest wooden western style building in Japan and is designated an important cultural property. The house is laid out with an irregular floor plan. Another striking feature is the veranda with its decorative latticework. A local influence can be seen in the roof, which is covered with Japanese-style tiles. The house was built for a British merchant, Thomas Blake Glover, who designed it himself. Glover came to Nagasaki at the age of 21. Later, he was the first person to bring a steam locomotive to Japan. He was also involved in founding a shipbuilding company and developing coal mines. The foreign merchants who resided in Nagasaki played an important role in Japan's modernization. The homes of various other foreigners who lived in Nagasaki have been relocated to Glover Garden for preservation. They're all valuable examples of Western style architecture from that era. Nagasaki's architecture is a testament to its rich cross-cultural history. It reflects the history of the city from the 17th century onward, when it was at the forefront of Japan's relations with the outside world. Today we've looked at a number of buildings around Nagasaki reflecting different periods of its history. This place, Glover Garden, by the way, was the setting for Puccini's opera Madame Butterfly, which was based on a novel set here in Nagasaki. There are various theories about who Madame Butterfly or Chocho-san really was. One theory was that she was based on Tsuru, the wife of Thomas Glover, although in fact the Glovers were a very happy family who remained here in Nagasaki for the rest of their lives. In a sense, Nagasaki is a kind of hodgepodge of different architectural styles from different periods of history. But with old buildings disappearing so rapidly in modern Japan, it's really refreshing to see the effort that people here have made to preserve their architectural heritage so that future generations can also enjoy and appreciate it. There's plenty more I want to see and I want to get out of this rain as well, so I'll see you again next time. Next time, we'll look at the five-story pagodas that can be found at many Buddhist temples in Japan and examine both their religious symbolism and amazing structures.